Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're gonna to be comparing objects and maps within JavaScript. Now, real quickly, when I say a map in JavaScript, I'm referring to the map object or an instance of a map and not the array map method, okay? Because both objects or plain objects and maps um, both do the job of storing key value pairs, but there are a couple of key differences between them and I'm gonna be covering that in today's video. So the best way I guess to uh, compare these two is gonna be through code. So let's have a look at an example of creating an object versus creating a map. So going down inside my JavaScript right here, I'm going to create a new constant called person object equal to a new plain JavaScript object and within here, I am going to provide a couple of properties. I'm gonna say the name of the person is Dom, their age is gonna be 35 and their occupation is going to be a software developer. So this is my plain JavaScript object. I'm sure most of you, um, if not all of you, have seen this before. Now let's compare this to what this would be with a map. So I'll say const person map equal to, I'll scroll down here, equal to a new instance of a JavaScript map. Now down here, I'm gonna say person map dot, and I'm gonna say set. Now I'll say here name as the key and then the value as DOM. And we can sort of see here that uh, using this particular syntax, maps are more, I guess, explicit. They're more programmatic. I'm saying person map dot set, as opposed to putting it within the object literal at the top here. So I can now do the exact same thing twice more for both the age and uh, the occupation. So I'll say age equal to 35 and occupation equal to software developer, just like that. Okay, so we have our two uh, instances here. Now if I was to console.log the person objects and then I also console.log the person map, I'll save this, go inside the browser, I'll refresh and go inside the dev tools and we can see here we get very similar results. If I was to expand the map, we get uh, in uh, Chrome itself, it formats the map for us and we can see here we get name, DOM, age, 35, occupation and software developer and the same goes of course for the object. So, we can see here that of course they share very similar purposes. They both store key value pairs. Now, let's begin with the differences between objects versus maps. And I'm gonna be doing this primarily geared towards the benefits of using a map over an object. So the first benefit of the map, which isn't visible here, is the fact that with objects, you are limited to either symbols or strings as the key, as opposed to maps where I can say, for example, a function is gonna be my key or uh, an array can be my key and so on. So you can put any bit of data as your key and not just a string. Of course, typically with objects, you're going to provide a string as your key. Okay, very rarely do you use a symbol, um, but like I said just, uh, you know, just before, you can also use other data types as your key with a map. So for example, let's, let's have a look here. So instead of having the name be a key, let, or a string should I say, let's attempt to make it a function within the person object. I'll say here, for example, a new arrow function and I'll say something like uh, console.log and I can say 10. Now we can see here we get syntax errors all over the place because of course I cannot set this function as my key to this value, okay? So let's put this back to the way it was. I'll just uh, copy it first off, put it back to the way it was. Then I'm gonna attempt to set this function as the key for the map. I'll save this and we get no syntax errors. If I was to save this, go back in the browser and refresh here, we can see that 
the map allows us to have that function as the key for the value of DOM. Okay, now I'm not going to give you a good example off the top of my head here as opposed to when you want to do this, but I can tell you that from my experience, you can definitely create some interesting solutions by having other data types as your key within the maps. Okay, think about situations where maybe you want to, for whatever reason, have some sort of action as your key and then the value might be something else. So like I said, it's hard to give an example right now, but uh, keep it in mind when you are designing your solutions for anything you're doing in the future, especially on the server side within Node.js and things like that. Okay, cool. Now, the second benefit of using maps over objects is going to be the performance. Now, it appears that maps are quicker when you want to frequently insert data or delete data as opposed to objects which may uh, take a little bit longer. Now, the real world benefits of this may only be relevant to very large scale operations, but if you are doing that, keep in mind that of course maps may be your preferred choice if you are constantly manipulating the data within your key value pair list, okay? And the last one here is gonna be convenience. And this is typically when it comes to uh, looping over your key value pairs, okay? So let's just put this back to being a, um, a string as the name uh, key right there. And now we can attempt to loop over both the object and the map. When it comes to looping over the object, as you may know, if you attempt to use the for in loop here, you need to specify object.has own property and you need to see if um, the actual key you're looping over is a property of the object or the prototype because of course objects have prototypes and you may be picking up on a prototype key and not an actual key within your object. So when it comes to objects, um, if you do want to get an accurate loop over your object, you need to use uh, the keys method or function part of the object object. So let me quickly show you that right now. I'll get rid of um, this right here and make it a for of instead. So I'll say here const key of then say object.keys and pass in the person object just like this. So now we have this iterator over every key within the object. I can now say const value is equal to person object at the specified key. Then I'll say console.log and I'll use template strings here to say key. Then I say equals greater than, then provide the value right there. I'll save this, go back in the browser here, refresh, and we get name, DOM, age 35, occupation, software developer. So we can see here we need to specify object.keys and then of course grab that particular uh, value, um, of course, using that function. Then, you know, then we can just simply access um, those key value pairs. However, when it comes to a map, you can easily loop over it without the need to call this extra function a little bit more convenient. So let's change this now to be const key of, and now say person map, but we are gonna be taking advantage of array destructuring here. And we're gonna say uh, square bracket key, then comma value and closing square bracket. And now we have access to key and value directly. If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get name, DOM, A35, occupation, software developer. So we can see here, uh, maps have better support natively for looping and iteration and things like that, okay? Now, one last key difference between objects and maps is actually gonna be in favor of plain objects, and that is converting it to JSON, which of course is a very critical thing, uh, typically in applications that call APIs and things like that, okay? So let's remove this for loop and say console.log json.stringify and attempt to convert the person object into a JSON string. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh here, 
and we get a perfectly fine JSON string of the data, okay? Now, what if I try to do the same thing with maps? Well, it's gonna be a lot different. Let's say person map, json.stringify, save this back in the browser, refresh, and we get this, okay? So we can see here that, yes, it was successful in converting it to JSON, but we do not get the keys, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go into how to actually do it with maps in this video, but I am gonna be linking down below a Stack Overflow article which explains how you can use a couple of functions being passed into the JSON stringify function to of course go about doing that. But the point is it is a bit of work unless you're using some sort of external library which allows you to do it, um, it's fine. But if you aren't using a library or you uh, don't want to put in the efforts to stringify a map, then it might not be worth doing so. So in those situations, for example, if you need to post some data to a API or the back end of your web server, it's probably better to just use an object, especially because the benefits of a map may not always uh, be directly noticeable. So like I said, in those situations, just use an object in my opinion, as opposed to a map. But of course, when you're on the server side in Node.js, you care about performance and the programmatic approach of the map, definitely go ahead and use the map in those situations. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.